coaches and fans alike to all show through sportsmanship. And lastly, we ask you for your traveling mercy and safety for everyone going home after tonight's broadcast. In Christ's name we pray. And we're live here in Haskell, Oklahoma, about two hours northwest of Pecola. They just got done doing the national anthem. I just found out the cheerleaders and the band are not here tonight. <coughs> so we got a handful of fans here ready to cheer on the boys. Stadium here is very nice. The turf, turf field. So the sun finally went down. It was directly in our eyes. It was getting hard to see there for a minute. But we are live here in Haskell. Let's get a look at uh, Haskell's record here. They're, I think they're two and. Two and five overall, one and three in the district. Beat Caney Valley. Lost to Shakota, lost to Morris, lost to Central, lost to Porter, and lost to Tallahena. And then beat Canadian last week. The remaining schedules Gore and Panama. Here. Players are just now starting to come out for the uh, coin toss. Ooh, I know what I need. I never got my roster stuff out. It's a pretty nice night. It's only 75 degrees here. I think it might get down to 60 by 10 o'clock, so it's not too bad here. No wind whatsoever right now. Just spoke to Coach Barlow, and he's going to let me attempt to interview him at halftime and get a info on the upcoming basketball season which pro hopefully doesn't start soon. Looks like the captains for Pecola are going to be number nine, Jackson Parker, and number four, Sean Smith. Captains for Haskell Haymakers, number seven, Lucas King, number one, Dylan Ozinga. Number 44, Brian Roman Brunel. Brunel, he said. So we'll sit here and get some feedback here.
Looks like Pacola won the toss, and they elect to receive. So we'll s start out in the south end zone. Make sure you got that. Give a shout out to my sponsors. I want to thank them for uh, sponsoring me here and allowing me to go do this. And, and I have a feeling there's a lot of people at home watching tonight. I hope there is, anyways. Haskell, looks like Haskell might be getting ready to come out there. We got our Indians in the tunnel. Smoke machines are going. You can hear me. They got music in there. Trying to get the boys pumped up. It's actually a pretty good idea. We could have used that in Central. We just seemed flat coming out at the beginning of that game. Let's see if you can hear him. Still a minute 26 left on the clock, but here they come. They have a, a press box on this side of the field for the visitors, but the windows in it are so small, I couldn't see out of them, so. I'm actually in the stands with the fans. It's a really nice evening, so. Haskell getting ready to kick off. Looks like uh, it's going to be number 20, 22 is going to kick off. Cooper Votal. Looks like he's going to kick it to the right side. So hopefully the hands team is ready. A lot of smoke on the field right now. And it's going to be a high pooch kick and hits the ground and number two Hardwick takes his, takes the ball, runs it up to about the Pecola 45-yard line. It's going to be first and 10, Pecola. I've been having this scoreboard. <clears throat> it, you may, it may fade out and look like it's turned off, but it's actually not. It's just the uh, refresh rate. Basically... Long pass out here to the right. That's to Garrett Scott. And that's going to be a gain of about 15. I know that's 12 on the on the pass play. It's going to be a Pacola Indians first down. All the smoke from the Pacola tunnel has come out onto the field. Gonna throw it to the left. That's to Terrell, and he's gonna gain 
Another 12 on the play. That's going to be another Pecola first down. Shout out to Amber Pugh. Austin takes the snap. He's going to throw it. He's move up in the pocket. He's looking to scramble, and he's going to be hit. That's number three on the tackle, Williamson. Might have gained a yard on the play. It's going to bring up second down. Where's the play clock at? They don't have the play clock on. Austin looking to throw it again. He's got a man wide open. And that's going to be Ty Jarrell. He'll be tackled and knocked out of bounds around the two-yard line. So will be first and goal, Pecola, from the two. Ty was wide open on that pass play. So they got a different package coming in. Now they got Austin Hardwick coming out. And Ben Hicks coming in. And you're going to have A.J. Lines Jarrell is probably going to take the snap. He does. He's going to follow his blockers. And he's going to be in. Be touchdown, Pecola. So AJ with the two run, two yard touchdown run. Call the lineup for the two point conversion. Same formation. They're just actually no. We're gonna have Hayden Chafee. He's gonna take the snap. He follows his blockers in the end zone. So a two point conversion is good. So with 9:56 left here in the first, Bacola takes the lead, 8-0. We're gonna take a break. This is the Bacola Indians Network. Looking for a roofing company in eastern Oklahoma that will treat you like family? Standard Roofing offers services such as traditional roof and flat roof repair for commercial, industrial, and residential customers. For a free estimate, call 479-629-3073. Standard Roofing, a proud and honest local roofing company. So, Pecola with a quick two-minute drive and gets the points on the board first. Ball goes and hits the front line here, number 22. He's able to catch it and falls on the ground with it. That's Votal. So, now Pecola will – ball spot at the 50-yard line. Haskell comes out with their first drive of the game here. Looks like number one, Hozinga, is the quarterback. And he's got his tailback in the back, number 99. I don't have that name. So maybe I'll hear him say it on the loudspeaker. He's going to hand it off to 99. He cuts it back to the right. And finally going to be brought down after about a 15-yard gain. So it's first down. Haymakers. I don't know if the defense was kind of confused on that play or that Haymakers able to get 15 on it. They're going to pitch it out. That's number five on the pitch out. Pedro Diaz gains maybe four on the play. Bring up second and six.
And you're going to hand it off to 99 again this time. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. Might have gained a yard on the play. He's going to bring up a third and five. So a big third down play here for the Indians. I think that was David Hartz on the tackle on that left end, defensive end. Zinga, he's being rushed. He's hit and knocked down in the backfield. Huge loss on the play. He's going to be marked down at the Pacola 48-yard line. That was number eight, Dakota Terrell on the tackle, on the sack. Huge loss on the game. About a 15-yard loss. Can bring up a fourth and 15, or actually a fourth and 20. So Pacola's going to line up for the punt. Dakota Terrell deep for the Indians. Ozinga, the quarterback. We'll see if he's going to punt it. I don't know what they're waiting on. Are they wanting to get the penalty to back it up? It's a high punt. Dakota comes up, gets it on the ball's on the ground. He falls on it, able to recover it. So, Pacola gets the ball back here around the 26-yard line. The first and 10, Pacola. Austin Hardwick with A.J. next to him. Another pass. Oh, over the middle. That's to Ty Jarrell again. Hold on to the ball, Ty. They're trying to strip it. And they're going to call him down around the Haymaker 43-yard line. It's a great pass by Austin Hardwick to Ty Jarrell. So Ty with two big catches this evening already. Cola has passed every play outside of the five-yard line. We had the rushing touchdown earlier, but every other play's been. Here we go with our first rush. That's A.J. Lines Jarrell, and he's going to gain about seven on the play, eight, bring up second down. Austin looking to throw it again. He throws it over the middle. That's to his brother, Braden. It's going to be a gain of about eight on the play, so that'll be enough for Pacola first down. AJ to Austin's right. And they're going to hand it to A.J. at the middle. He breaks free, and he's going to be in the end zone for another Pecola touchdown. They had him, the linebackers had him in the back, or the second stage there in the defense, and he broke free, and there was nobody else to get him. So now Pecola will line up for the two-point conversion. That'll be Hayden Chafee again, and he's going to be short. 
of the two-point conversion. So Pecola leads 14-0 with 5-10 left here in the first quarter. We'll take a break. This is the Pecola Indies Network. In the hottest days of summer or the coldest days of winter, you want your HVAC system working properly all the time. In fact, your unit needs to be serviced at least once a year to prevent potential issues and keep it running smoothly. Whether you are looking for a routine service or you have major issues, allow JC Mechanical Heating and Air Conditioning to get your unit working smoothly. They even provide 24-hour emergency service. To schedule your service, call 479-650-0944. Oh, now Piccolo will line up to kick it again here. We'll see if he can get it past this first row of haymakers here. He kicks it. It's going to be caught here by the first line again around the haymaker 49. So it looks like he's trying to... Uh, Get the bounce that bounces over that front line. It just hasn't happened yet. So, Ozinga, again, quarterback and number 99. The announcer hasn't said 99's name, so he may not know it either. May have the same line, uh, roster I've got. Looking to throw it. And he's rushed. It's a duck, and it's caught over Braden's head there. And he'll be in the end zone for the Haymaker touchdown. That was Lucas King. The ball was just thrown up. If it was duck season, it would have been shot out of the sky. And Braden just jumped a little too soon. And Lucas makes the catch, and... Runs it in for the touchdown. So the Haymakers will line up here. They're going to go for two, I'm assuming. Man in motion. And they're going to get the snap. Dakota. He's being forced out of the pocket. He's running to his left, and it's caught in the back of the end zone, so the two-point conversion is good. So after Pecola scores, Haymakers go down the field with one play. That's a 51-yard touchdown pass. Dylan Ozinga's two-point drive is good. Pa pass to Dominic Lee for the two-point conversion. With four minutes, 57 seconds in the first quarter, Pecola 14, your Haymakers eight. Now the Haymakers will line up again. This time he's setting up on the other side of the field, so. Let's see what he's gonna, gonna kick it deep or if he's gonna try to kick it. Last time he pooch punt. Looks like he's gonna kick it to the far side again. And it's gonna be a onside kick top kick and we get the ball it was Chris Rivera, Chris Rivera with the recovery Pacola will take over the Pacola 47 Hardwick takes the snap. He's looking to throw it. He throws it to Gary Scott. He makes one move, makes Scott miss. He's down the sidelines. He's at the 20, the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Pecola. So 
The last three plays have been touchdowns. Two for Pacola, one for the Haymakers. That's a 53-yard touchdown by Garrett Scott. So both sides, defenses, having a tough time stopping these offenses. This time we're going to have A.J. in the backfield. He's going to take the snap. He's going to flip it to Dakota Terrell. And he's in for the two-point conversion. So Pacola now leads 22-8 to eight with 4.45 left in the first. We're going to take a break. This is the Pacola Indians Network. Find out how shelter insurance agent Shane Riggs can help you with your auto, home, and life insurance needs. He can help make sure you get the right coverage at the right price while providing the quality service you expect. See Shane Riggs located at 402 North Pecola Boulevard or give him a call at 918-436-2421. It's going to be on the ground. Haymakers fall on it at the Haymaker 37. It was White Cole recovered it. So now Pecola defense is going to try to recover from that last play. Let's see if they can get a stop here. Ozinga by himself in the backfield. We have trips left. Cola rushes. He's being forced out of the pocket. He throws it downfield. Oh, my goodness. They're going to call pass interference on that. That's not pass interference if he falls. Referees are talking about it, so I don't know. We have a hold on Pacola, so it'll be a 10-yard <coughs> penalty, first and 10. Haymakers from the 47-yard line. They're going to wide receiver screen. He drops it. That's Pedro Diaz. So bring up second 10 for the Haymakers. Four fifteen left in the first. Diaz had the blockers ahead. He caught that. He probably would have got some yards on that reception. And they're going to hand it off to 99. He goes right up the middle. He's hit and gets loose. And finally, he's going to be tripped up and brought down by number 44, Ty Jarrell. Bring up third and seven for the Haymakers. Big third down play here for the Indians. Cola. Needs to be careful here. We always have people draw us off sides at this point. And they stay. He's looking to throw it. He's being rushed. It's in, ball's in the air, and it's going to be knocked down by Garrett Scott. 
Lucas King again, the intended receiver. Good play by Garrett there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down here for the Haymakers. Looks like they may be swapping out for the punt team. We're going to have Dakota Terrell is going to go deep to receive. Watch the ball. Quarterback, it's going to be a fake. He's going to take it. And he'll be tackled, depending on where the spot is. They're going to give him the first down. Wow. Good spot there by the ref for the Haymakers. So it'll be first to 10 now from the Bacola 42 yard line. Rosinga in shotgun. He's going to hand it to his tailback. That's number 99 again. He goes right up the middle and he's finally going to be tripped up. That's number 44, Ty Jarrell in the tackle. Mason, I heard the first nine. Mason Londigan. He's actually number 75 on the roster. Shout out to Sheila Brown watching from Phoenix, Arizona tonight. Ozinga looking to throw it. He's being forced out of the pocket. That's Dakota again. And he throws it away. So it's going to be incomplete. It's going to bring up third down, third and one. Questions. They still got the marker for s it's third down, but the marker's saying second on the field. So I don't know what they're talking about right now. <coughs> So they're going to have a intentional grounding call on the Haymakers. The ball did not make it back to the line of scrimmage. That's why. He was out of the box, but the ball never made it back to the line of scrimmage. So now we got a third and 22, 23 here. A big third down play here for the Indians. Ozinga looking to throw it. He's going to throw it deep over the middle. And to be incomplete, covered by number nine. That's Jackson Parker on the coverage. Pass is incomplete, no uh, flag on the play. 
It'll be fourth and 22. Mozinga punts it. It's a good punt. This time Dakota catches it cleanly. He's going to run to his right. He makes one guy miss. And finally going to be hit and tackled. And there's going to be a flag on the play. Looks like we may have a push block in the back or yeah, block in the back on Pecola. So they'll bring this one back. One twenty three left here in the first. Austin takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to AJ up the middle, and he's going to be wrapped up and brought down. That was number 56 on the tackle. He gains a couple on the play. Rocker Porter on the tackle. Bring up second six. Austin looking to throw it. He's being forced to his right. He's hit right when he throws it. Pass is incomplete. It's going to bring up third down. So third down now here for the Indians. This may be their first third down play of the evening. Austin looking like he may be a little shook up. He have injured one of his hands or his elbow when he was tackled. He was hit right when he started to throw that ball. Trips left. Austin throws it deep. He's got a man wide open. And that's going to be Garrett Scott. We have a flag on the play. Pointing towards the haymakers, but they're bringing it back. I mean, it's like they are. Have a legal man. Yeah. Legal procedure? What was that? Legal man downfield. So now we have a third and 11 for the Indians. They change the formation. It's going to be a screenplay, and it's actually intercepted. That's number eight for the Haymakers, P.J. Foul. So now the Haymakers are going to take over from the 20-yard line in Pecola territory. So now the Indian defense here is going to have to get a stop. Ozinga and Diaz in the backfield. Trips left. Well, 
He's going to run it right. He runs right into a Pecola Indian wall. That was Hayden Chafee and Chris Rivera. The wall of Indians. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter with your score. Pecola 22, Haymakers 8. We're going to take a break. This is the Pecola Indians Network. When you're looking for fast, reliable plumbing solutions, look no further than Drain Masters in Pecola. Drain Masters offers a wide range of services to tackle the most complex plumbing issues. Whether it's residential or commercial, they provide reliable service at an affordable price. Drain Masters is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for your emergency or non-emergency plumbing needs. Give them a call today at 918 Four three six two one three zero. Are you worried about your trees when the next ice storm or severe weather hits? Do you need your trees trimmed for better appearance or safety? Give Archie's Tree Service a call today. Archie's provides the attention and personal service that you would expect. Archie's offers tree trimming, topping, pruning, and full removal. For a free estimate for any of their services, Call Archie's at 479-806-8959. Protect your trees by calling Archie's Tree Service today. So they flipped the field here. So Ozinga and Diaz here in the backfield again. We've got trips left and we have timeout. You've got to be kidding me. Man in motion. It's going to be a screenplay to the left. He catches it out of the backfield, and he's going to be tackled. Ball's on the ground. They're going to call him down. That was Ben Hicks on the tackle, open field tackle, and that's going to be a loss on the play. Bring up a third and 19 now. And loss on the first play, loss on the second one here. Got Lauren Drake watching from Alabama tonight. Clint, Clint Slavens. Shout out. <clears throat> Trips right. Man in motion to the left. And we're going to have a penalty on the play. It's like we may have a delay of game. Again, their, their play clocks are not working, so the back judge behind the defense is keeping the play clock. And when he gets within 10 seconds, he makes a motion. And when he's within five, he starts counting with an arm motion. And it's going to take, a, I guess, a couple plays here for these quarterbacks to remember to look back there. So it looks like we may have the same play here. Another man in motion. He comes back to his right, and he goes deep. And it's going to be an incomplete pass. That's number five again on the coverage, Ben Hicks.
Got Ray and Lori Rivera watching from Georgia. Got people watching all over the United States here. I want to thank everybody for tuning in for tonight's game. It's a Thursday night, so I'm going up against Thursday night football. But I think it's like the Jaguars or something. I mean, who watches them? Mozinga looking to throw it again. He's going to throw it deep. We've got another man. He's covered. It's going to be intercepted, intercepted by Brayden Hardwick. He's going to cut it back up field. He breaks tackles left and right. And finally going to be brought down the 37-yard line, 38-yard line. So a 38-yard return after the interception. He caught it right around the end zone. Goal line. So now Pacola offense back on the field. So we had three quick touchdowns within a 20 second period. And now we haven't scored for six minutes. It's going to be AJ Lines drill up the middle. He's going to be pulled back. That's number 56 again on the tackle. Riker Porter. He might have gained three on the play. Bring up a third, second, and seven. It's going to be a deep pass, and it's going to be caught by Dakota Terrell. Ball was on the 38, and he's going to be forced out of bounds around the 26-yard line on Haymaker territory. So it's a little over 30-yard pass here. Completion to Dakota Terrell. We have Ty Jarrell in motion. They're gonna, he's going to tuck it and run up the middle there and be forced out of bounds around the left side. And that's going to be enough for a Colt Indian first down. So Austin filling the pocket collapse on him. Able to move the ball down the field for another call the first down. Ball's placed around the 14 yard line. We've got another package in now. We've got Austin on the sidelines and we got Ben Hicks coming in. And Chris Rivera. Looks like A.J. Lyons Durrell is going to take the snap. He's going to fake it to Hicks and keep it. He'll be tackled and brought down. Wrapped him up around his neck. That looks like he's going to be all right. He's had a shoulder. It's bothered him the last couple of games. I talked to him before the game. He said he was feeling good, so. This time, he's looking to throw it, and he throws it in the end zone, and it's caught. That's going to be Garrett Scott catching it over the defender for a Pecola touchdown. The receivers that these Indians have, I mean, who do you put your best defender on? We've got three, four guys that we're going to have, let's see, it's going to be direct snap to A.J. He takes it right up the middle, and that's going to be good. So I'll take our score to 31. Or wait, no, 30. So Cola is ahead 30 to 8. I'm going to take a break. This is the Pecola Indians Network. 
Ready to turn your location into a landmark? Boulder Designs by Baldigo Enterprises can help make it a reality. Boulder Designs creates custom boulders that can be made into any shape, size, or color. Whether it's commercial monument signage, residential landscape enhancement, a custom mailbox, or fire pit, Boulder Designs stands out from the crowd and are custom made just for you. To get a quote from your custom Boulder Design, visit fortsmith.boulderdesign.net or call 479-650-3930. Owners Lee and Stacy Baldigo are proud supporters of Pocola Public Schools. Let them help bring your vision to life. So Pecola with a 30 to eight lead right now. After the, Pecola able to run down the field and score after the Braden Hardwick interception. We had Garrett Scott catch, made a great catch. I don't know how well it came across the camera because it was on the far side of the field in the very back of the end zone. But he literally went up and caught it over the defender. The defender actually had the uh, position on him. But Garrett, being the basketball player he is, was able to jump over him and grab it. Again, I want to thank everybody for watching tonight. This is the fall break week for the Oklahoma schools. It's um, almost, I think, almost all high school games are being played tonight on Thursday night. So I know it's tough to make a game, especially when it's two hours away. So I'm glad I'm able to bring this to you. Ozinga looking to throw it. He passes it out. That's a... Uh, King again. He makes one guy miss and stiff arms another one. He'll be out of bounds around the Pocola 35 yard line. So be first and 10 Haymakers in Pocola territory. A little screen pass out here to the right. Haymakers line up. Same fam formation, but on the other side, they're going to give it to the tailback. He's hit right in the backfield. May have lost a yard on the play. Looks like they yeah, he last lost about a half a yard. Bring up a second 11. Shout out to Cameron Harvey. And this time Ozinga is going to keep it. He makes a spin move, makes another guy miss. Stiff arms one guy, and he's finally going to be forced out of bounds. Looks like it, it's going to be enough for the first down. So big third down play there for the Haymakers and quarterback. I got a viewer watching from Tallahassee, Florida. I would say you're probably winning the uh, distance contest right now. I don't know. Phoenix is pretty far away, too. Ball's on the ground. Ozinga picks it up, and he's going to be tackled. Oh, he almost breaks free. So Cole's going to have to wrap him up when he decides to run with the ball. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Going to bring up second and ten. Five thirty-five left here in the first.
Here you go. Hayden. Oh. Chafee almost had him. He's going to be forced back up the middle, and he's going to be met by Dakota Terrell. And then Chafee comes and helps him get him down, but Chafee blew that play up. Forced him out of the pocket and forced him to scramble. So now we've got a third and looks like around 15 now for the Haymakers. Clock still running. 435 here in the first half. Stay with us here in the second half. I've got the Pecola Indian basketball coach, Coach Barlow. I'm going to try to do my best Mr. Choice impression and see if I can do an interview here. And the receiver's forced out of bounds, so the catch is no good. It's going to bring up a fourth and 15. So we have a timeout on the field. I didn't see who called it. Looks like no Haskell called the timeout. <clears throat> so we're going to take one with them. We'll be right back. This is the Pecola Indians Network. Craving pizza? Maybe a calzone or some wings? Be sure to visit Simple Simon's Pizza in Pecola, your hometown pizza place. Dine-in or carry-out available. Call 918-436-2540 or stop by to place your order today. Owner Randy Reidner is a proud supporter of Pecola Public Schools. Simple Simon's Pizza, simply the best pizza. So after the timeout, that was taken by the Haymakers. It's a fourth and 15. I'm sure they'll probably go for it. They're around the Pecola 32-yard line right now. So Ozinga is going to be the only man in the backfield. We have four receivers here to the right. May have a man in motion than we do. He's going even farther to the right. He's being forced out of the pocket. He's being rushed. He gets away. Makes another guy miss. And he's going to be hit and brought down around the Pecola 25-yard line. So he'll be short of the first down. They'll be turned over on downs. First and 10, Pecola. So Ozinka. Ozinga. Doing what he can, he he's broke a couple of tackles before. So the good job by the defensive backs for Pacola, covering up the receivers and forcing Ozinka to scramble. Got. Austin Hardwick, he takes the snap. He's going to hand it off to A.J. up the middle. He'll be brought down after a gain of about eight or nine on the play. Bring him second down. <clears throat> Got 340 left here in the first. Again, stay with us at halftime. We'll take a short break while Mr. Or Coach Barlow gets up here and gets ready, and then we will try to get some information about the upcoming basketball season. Time Austin's looking to throw it. He's going to be forced out of the pocket. Lose a couple on the play. He's going to bring up a third and five. Third 
Austin looking to throw it again. He takes a five-step drop back over the middle. And it's going to be batted away. Good defensive play there by Logan Sanders. Intended receiver was Ty Jarrell over the middle. So that's going to bring up a fourth down. So I don't know if Pacola's going to punt or they're going to go for it here. They're deep in their own territory. Looks like they may be going for it. Fourth down play here for the Indians. First one tonight. And they do go for it. Austin, he throws it to his brother, Braden. And Braden makes the catch, and that's going to be enough for the first down. He'll be spotted around the Pacola 44. So good pickup by the Indians there for fourth and five. Deep in their own territory, too. Austin looking to throw it again. It's going to be Garrett Scott over the middle. Oh, he almost drops the ball. Luckily, there was no defender around him to knock it out of out of the air when it just popped out of his arm there. But that'll be enough for a Piccola first down. Piccola in Haymaker territory. Two minutes left here in the first. First half. Trips right. Dakota on the near side. Austin looking over the middle. That's AJ. He catches it. He gets away from the defender. And he's in for the touchdown. So with 140 left here in the first half, Pacola drives down the field after a defensive stand, forcing the change on possession. And we're going to have Saeed Badola come in. Got Ty Jarrell coming out and... Ben Hicks coming in for the two-point conversion. It's going to go to Badola. He's going to go to his right side, and he's in for the two-point conversion. So but that's not right. Was it not 30 to 8 a minute ago? It should be 38 to 8 now. And they went 1.2 too many. So we're going to keep it right here. They're getting out to kick the ball pretty quick, so. Oh, that is an eight. Their scoreboard's messed up. So David Hartz will set his tee to get ready to kick it. The Haymakers will receive the ball in the second half. Bacola won the toss and elected to take it in the first half, so when we come back from halftime, the Haymakers will be getting the ball. So hopefully Pecola can hold them out of the end zone here. It's gonna be a deep kick. Number 17, he's gonna run to his left. And the Indian's able to get to that side of the field and bring him down. So a good kick by the Indians. Looks like they had a return left on. We kicked it to the right, forcing him to run all the way across the field, allowing the Indians to catch up to him. So they'll take over now at the 37-yard line. 130 left in the first half.
looking to throw it, and that's going to be out to King, and he's going to be hit and brought down. Kept in bounds. Haymakers are still with two timeouts. Lucas King on the reception. Gang of about three on the play. Second and seven. Brought down by Ty Jarrell. It'll be number 99 on the carry. He's hitting the backfield and going to be probably brought down. Initial hit by Chris Rivera. Now the Haymakers clocks down 10 seconds. They're going to hand it off. He's hitting the backfield. <coughs> that's Bryson Elkins. And that's going to be the end of the first half with your score, Pecola, 38. Haymakers, 8. We'll take a break here. I'll see if I can get Coach Barlow up here. This is the Pecola Indians Network. Looking for a roofing company in eastern Oklahoma that will treat you like family? Standard Roofing offers services such as traditional roof and flat roof repair for commercial, industrial, and residential customers. For a free estimate, call 479-629-3073. Standard Roofing, a proud and honest local roofing company. In the hottest days of summer or the coldest days of winter, you want your HVAC system working properly all the time. In fact, your unit needs to be serviced at least once a year to prevent potential issues and keep it running smoothly. Whether you are looking for a routine service or you have major issues, allow JC Mechanical Heating and Air Conditioning to get your unit working smoothly. They even provide 24-hour emergency service. To schedule your service, call 479-650-0944. Find out how Shelter Insurance Agent Shane Riggs can help you with your auto, home, and life insurance needs. He can help make sure you get the right coverage at the right price while providing the quality service you expect. See Shane Riggs located at 402 North Pecola Boulevard or give him a call at 918-436-2421. All right, I want to welcome everybody back to our halftime. I got Coach Barlow here. Hey, thank you. Glad to, glad to be here tonight. Uh, the, uh, we, the Indians look good tonight. Yeah, they do. They're uh, playing good tonight. A lot of passing going on. A lot of passing. Well, we, we're, we're showing off our athletes tonight. Yeah, we, we do. Uh, we, we've hit a lot of guys in, in space, and they're making plays, making good runs. Uh, we've, we've really mixed up our passing tonight and running as well. Uh, the kids are doing a good job. Yeah, I, I was saying earlier when uh, Garrett Scott popped that one ball in that in the far corner. corner. Yeah, just took it off his head. I was just like, you know, we've got four good receivers. I Absolutely. Mean, it, Absolutely. How do you yeah, – Absolutely. you got, you, yeah. you got to put your best guy on the best – we, we've Best got defender some on them. guys that can go up and make catches, and, and then uh, we've got some guys, uh, you know, uh, Ty's, uh, Jarrell's done yeah, a great job good. tonight. Looks really athletic. Uh, Cash Jarrell can make plays. Uh, after he makes that catch, he's got some speed. He, yeah. he ran the 200 for me uh, this spring and, and was like maybe like a – just a fraction of a second from qualifying from the state tournament and so really? uh, yeah i mean for the state track meet and uh, in the 200 meters so he's gotten a lot faster and of course coda and garrett and Braden can all go yeah. make plays we got a handful coda. of guys that, that can and i mean that hopefully uh that's 
from years, several years of Coach Parker and myself uh, getting those guys in the weight room, and I, I think it's starting to show off. You're starting to see that with Coda a little bit. He's starting to grow into his body, and yeah. the, the, uh, where he's has just been lanky, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like a giraffe in the past. He He's long and, and strong right now, and, you, and he's got a burst to him now, and he can break away speed. You know, you see him putting a lot of pressure on these quarterbacks tonight. He, you he's can, looking good. Yeah, you can definitely tell on the football field where Coda, he's just – it's night and day from last year. Oh, 100%. I mean, 100%. like you say, when he catches the ball, he's – the way he's running. I, I, I think a lot of that, and I think Coach Parker will tell you the same thing, is, is Coda's work ethic. He works yeah. so hard. He wants to be good. You know, he comes in, uh, he's got football practice every day. He comes in uh, every morning at 7 with me in the gym. Really? To, and, and that was his, what he wanted to do. He wanted to come in uh, every morning and, and get an hour's worth of work in. Uh, he wants to be good. That's good. And, 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 and he has in the past, I think this is the first year that his hard work and all that's really starting to pay off because his he's I mean 16 you know he's just growing into his mm -hmm. body right yeah, now and he's starting to be able to be coordinated and, and the strength is has converted into speed and uh, he, he looks good he looks good he's, yeah, he he's just an all-around athlete so I don't want the season to end anytime soon but absolutely not I'm, I'm not gonna lie I'm looking forward to the basketball season we're looking forward to the basketball season. We hope these guys go far into the playoffs. So, you know, my thing is, uh, hey, I want them to win. I just, I want them to stay healthy. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I worry you. about them staying healthy, but, but, and that's hard as a basketball coach. But uh, you want these guys to win and 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 uh, build confidence and, and help build. You know, I think the, the as the football program continues to build, as the basketball program continues to build, the baseball program, it's just good for Pecola. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But we're looking forward to the basketball season we had a great summer this year you know the only one we lost uh, from last year was Zach Jones right, who we, we miss guys did so much for us and uh, you know he's playing football over at uh, over at Tahlequah, Tahlequah now and doing real well, getting to play on special teams and stuff. So that's the kind of kid we lost. Uh, but but uh, we we think we're going to be – I think we're, we're going to be better than we were last year. Uh, we had a great summer, played – we tried to play mostly uh, 6A schools uh, this summer and, and did oh, very really? well. Against, yeah, did very well against mo pretty much everybody we played. We, we had a great summer, and, and uh, we're, we know that's going to convert over to a good basketball season. You're, uh, how many incoming freshmen do you have? Uh, incoming freshmen, we've only got maybe two or three. Uh, two or three? You know, yeah, we had about – Three of the starters from last year's group that were eighth graders uh, went to other schools this year. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so we 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 only have, but the two that we have, uh, the the two primary uh, ones we had this summer were Brock Britton and uh, Ty Jarrell, and mm -hmm. both of those guys were really really good for us this summer. That's good. Did, just did great get for them us. The, uh... And both those guys will get some playing time this year for varsity. Yeah. And we picked up, uh, you know, A.J. Jarrell. He played two years ago, uh, chose right. not to play, play last, year. last year, and uh, he came back and said he wanted to play. And uh, we, you know, we talked about it, and he uh, yeah, told him he needed to come have a good summer for us. And he had an outstanding summer. He was one good. of our better players. Uh, great attitude. One of our better passers. Uh, we we just couldn't have been more pleased with him. And so adding him to that group, and, and, and Drew Jones has gotten a lot better. Uh, of course, you know, last year, uh, Braden Hardwick was a ninth grader. Right. Uh, and I think he's gotten so much better. Yeah. Just just a year of maturity. The speed you're going to have. Yes, yes. We've got some speed. I think we'll be deeper than we were last year, which really had an effect on us not being able to go very deep right. last year, and uh, and and the Chafee kid uh, uh, that, he that moved play? in, he's going to play. Yes, his okay. dad coaches uh, and forever has coached all. He's got a bunch of brothers and sisters, and his dad's coached over in the Fort Smith Boys so Club for some. a long time. So he's all those Chafee kids have played some basketball. He didn't he he didn't play in Fort Smith in high school, but he grew up playing basketball. Yeah. So he's going to help us. He's going to help us. He moves so you, his feet well. You're going to have height on the court. You're going to have speed on the court. 
We have a little more weight than we've had yeah. in the last several years, and that's yeah. going to help us a lot. So we're, we're I mean, we're, we're, we know, we're, we're trying to get in there and try to get a, shooting the ball as well as we can, yeah. and that's hard to do while the majority of your kids are in football. Football. But uh, we shot the ball really well this summer, and we think we're going to shoot it well this year. Uh, there, there, there'll be some games we we may score some points this year. It's going to be, I think it'll be a fun team to watch. We'll be a little deeper. We can get up and down the court maybe a little faster than what yeah. we have in the past. I'm ready so, to see some. Uh, uh, gonna be I'm fun. ready to see Coda get a get free for one of them. Oh uh, well, and Garrett, big dunks. Garrett's getting some big dunks too. Really, right Garrett's now. doing yes, too. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. We've got a couple guys. You talk are, about your seniors. Who? So you got Garrett. We've got Garrett. We've got Austin, Austin. Hardwick, and we've got Drew. And both, all three of those okay. guys have, were were really good leaders for us this mm -hmm. summer. I think they're maturing and figuring out how to play together mm -hmm. you know i mean that, that's one thing you know we talk about uh say for instance we play dale and that that's the big uh the big uh, competition we have right. at the state level well those guys their coach always talks to me about how they've been together since second grade they live in the most of them live in the same neighborhood playing mm -hmm. the yard together since they right. were kids we haven't had that our kids haven't been together that long and so it's uh it, it's we're starting to see signs that, uh, you know, that the, uh, of teamwork and, right. and playing together. And when they do that, just everything's better. They Knowing all do better individually. Be and yeah, yeah, and just starting to figure out how to move without the ball, how to share the ball. And, and so I think, I think, I'm hoping this year the product we put on the floor will be a result of several years' work, uh, paying off. Yes. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Thanks for uh, coming up here and taking up some of this halftime. Oh, I'm glad to do it. I'm glad to talk about the team. We're excited, and uh, we hope uh, uh, the people in Pecola will come out and support us this year. And I, yeah. I know they're going to enjoy watching us play. If you want to see a team that's going to play fast and play hard and play defense, I think we'll be a fun team to watch. I think it will be, too. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank well, you for thank having you. me. Thank you, sir. All right, we're going to take another break here. we got five minutes before the second half starts. This is the Pecola Indians Network. In the hottest days of summer or the coldest days of winter, you want your HVAC system working properly all the time. In fact, your unit needs to be serviced at least once a year to prevent potential issues and keep it running smoothly. Whether you are looking for a routine service or you have major issues, allow JC Mechanical Heating and Air Conditioning to get your unit working smoothly. They even provide 24-hour emergency service. To schedule your service, call 479-650-0944. Find out how shelter insurance agent Shane Riggs can help you with your auto, home, and life insurance needs. He can help make sure you get the right coverage at the right price while providing the quality service you expect. See Shane Riggs located at 402 North Pecola Boulevard or give him a call at 918 436 2421. When you're looking for fast, reliable plumbing solutions, look no further than Drain Masters in Pecola. Drain Masters offers a wide range of services to tackle the most complex plumbing issues. Whether it's residential or commercial, they provide reliable service at an affordable price. Drain Masters is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for your emergency or non-emergency plumbing needs. Give them a call today at 918-436-2130. Are you worried about your trees when the next ice storm or severe weather hits? Do you need your trees trimmed for better appearance or safety? Give Archie's Tree Service a call today. Archie's provides the attention and personal service that you would expect. Archie's offers tree trimming, topping, pruning, and full removal. For a free estimate for any of their services, call Archie's at 479-806-8959. Protect your trees by calling Archie's Tree Service today. Ready to turn your location into a landmark? Boulder Designs by Baldigo Enterprises can help make it a reality. Boulder Designs creates custom boulders that can be made into any shape, size, or color. Whether it's commercial monument signage, residential landscape enhancement, a custom mailbox, or fire pit, Boulder Designs stands out from the crowd and are custom made just for you. To get a quote from your custom Boulder Design, visit 
fortsmith.boulderdesign.net or call 479-650-3930. Owners Lee and Stacy Baldigo are proud supporters of Pecola Public Schools. Let them help bring your vision to life. Craving pizza, maybe a calzone or some wings? Be sure to visit Simple Simon's Pizza in Pecola, your hometown pizza place. Dine in or carry out available. Call 918-436-2540 or stop by to place your order today. Owner Randy Reidner is a proud supporter of Pecola Public Schools. Simple Simon's Pizza, simply the best pizza. All right, we're back. Sorry, I was getting some uh, stats for us here. <clears throat> I'll thank Josh Merritt for – he takes the stats for the uh, for the team, the coaches, but he usually during halftime will try to relay that stuff to me. So far we got Austin Hardwick. He's 10 of 13 with 250 yards, three touchdowns. That's just the first half. Got A.J. with seven carries, 59 yards. He's got two rushing, one throwing, and one receiving. So A.J. with four touchdowns. Uh, we got Garrett Scott with four catches, 85 yards, and two touchdowns. We got Coda with two receptions for 47 yards. And Ty Jarrell with two receptions for 57 yards. Defensively, it's pretty much just been a team effort. Uh, we do have Coda with two sacks. And then we got Braden Hardwick with a pick and a 37-yard return. 
So they got the, they reset the clock. It's just inside a minute now. Cole leads 38 to eight right now. Uh, the Haymakers will get the ball. Referee's already on the field, ready to go. Cole, the kicking team, getting ready. See what looks like we got Chris Rivera now going to kick off. So Hart's not out there at the moment. And he's going to hit it and it bounce, gets the bounce he was looking for earlier. It goes past the Indians. Out of bounds. The <laughs> kick team <laughs> outran the ball. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. It bounced so high, Pacola ran underneath it and unable to stop to come back to it. And Haymaker's getting lucky and ball bounces and picked up. And pushed out of bounds. So, Haymakers at the 30, 37 yard line. The ball's on the ground. That's going to be Ozinga. He takes it and falls forward and gains about five on the play. About a second and six now for the Haymakers. Man in motion. That's King. Piccola showing blitz. And Ozinga able to stay up. And he's going to carry the pile. And finally be whistled down. Down at the 45. Bring up third down for the Indians. Third and two. And he will take it right up the middle. He's down the sideline and finally going to be forced out of bounds around the Pecola 26-yard line. So first down play by the Haymakers in Pecola territory. Man in motion, that's King. Ozinga rolling to his right, he's gonna tuck it and run. He has a blocker and he'll be in the end zone for the touchdown. Ozinga 
So, Haymakers taking less than two minutes to run down the field to score. So, Haymakers lining up to go for two here. He's going to roll to his right. He's being chased. He's going to be hit in the backfield. He throws and gets rid of it, and it's caught. So, the two-point conversion is good. That's King on the reception. He had Garrett boast. Hanging on to him, able to get rid of it. For the two point conversion. While we have this timeout here, we'll. Uh, looks like we do have a bunch of games tomorrow. I thought with fall break, everybody played on Thursday, but I guess not. Got some scores here. We got Spyro over Hugo. Sequoia. Tahlequah over Roland, 40 to eight. Vian over Keys. Washington over Purcell. Hebner over Wilberton. It's gonna be onside, it bounces right to balls on the ground. I can hear everybody yelling on the other side, but Pecola falls on it. That would have been bad. Because right now the Haymakers have the kind of have the momentum right now. Austin in the backfield with A.J. A.J. takes the ball up the middle, and he's going to gain about six on the play. Gains a five. It'll be second and five. Austin looking to throw it. It's going to be a receiver screen to the left. It's going to be stopped. Gain of about two on the play. Bring up a third and three. Your trips right now. A.J. to the right of Austin. Austin drops back. He's got a man over the middle. That's his brother, Brayden. And he's got one guy to beat, and he's going to be in. Touchdown, Pecola. No flags. So great play there by the Hardwick brothers. Austin to Brayden. It's a slant pass over the middle. Great catch and run by Braden Hardwick. It's going to be A.J. over to the left side. He's hit, and he's going to be stopped short. So the two-point conversion is no good. So with 9.40 left here in the third quarter, score is 44-16.
So now Picard will line up to kick it off. It'll be the second kickoff here, the second half. Last time the Haymakers had the ball, the quarterback pretty much ran it every play. Another, oh. So they didn't get the bounce they had last time. So the ball will be spotted around the Haymaker 43-yard line. Kind of Indian running on the field there late. So like I said before, Ozinga pretty much ran it every play last time. On the pass plays, he – ball's on the ground. Here he goes again. Busted play. He gets away. So they're going to have to wrap him up or hold on to him until you get some help. Well, that was Dakota Terrell in the backfield busting the play up. The snap was on the ground. But Ozinga literally takes a half a second to decide if he's going to throw it or not. And then he usually takes off running. So Pacola can contain him. <coughs> Got King in motion again. Got Scott running with him, and he's going to run to his right again. And he'll be brought down. It's going to be a gain of about five on the play. Bring up a third and eight. They're going to throw it. He's hit right when he throws it. Man's wide open downfield, but it's overthrown. That's King. I didn't see how he got that open, but. I don't know if they crossed and got our defensive backs crossed up or. Lined up to punt it, but call of defense going to have to be ready. They've ran a fake already once. Another player for the Haymakers, and he punts it. we got Garrett Scott deep. It's a good punt. He catches it. He's got a blocker in front of him. He's down the sideline, and we're going to have a flag. I don't understand why that's not holding. We got two thirty twos. Holding on return team. We have holding. So we got a stacked trips right here for the Indians. And he's going to throw it deep to his brother. Oh, and it's off. Braden lost his footage, so he was unable to get back to that pass. Feet got tangled up when he made the break to the outside.
Austin looking to throw it again. He's going to throw it deep. He's got a man. Oh, it's going to be over his head. That was Dakota Terrell. Now third down 10 for the Indians. Two incomplete passes here. So let's see what they do on the third and 10. Haven't had very many third and long situations tonight. They're going to throw it to the tailback out of the backfield. That's A.J. lines Jarrell, and he's going to get to the 31, and that's going to be enough for uh, Pacola first down. Austin looking to throw it. He's going to run to his left. And he's just going to run with it. And finally going to be brought down. Might have got back to the original line of scrimmage. Looks like he gained a yard on the play. He's going to bring up a second and nine. Got the different package in. Braden Hardwick came off the field limping. We're going to have A.J. run to his right. He gets free. Makes a guy miss. He's got a blocker in front of him. He's down the sidelines and finally going to be forced out of bounds. Haymaker territory. Around the 24-yard line. So we first and 10, Pacola. So great run there by A.J. lines Jarrell. A.J. with uh, four touchdowns tonight already. Two rushing, one throwing, and one receiving. Throwing his name in the hat for offensive player of the game. That's going to be pitched to Dakota Terrell. It's going to be a gain of about six on the play, maybe seven. Bring up second and three. So they leave the package in. Fakes it. He's going to throw it. He's got a man in the end zone. And it's in and out of the hands of Garrett Scott. I think if he would have caught it, he would have been out of the back of the end zone. So the pass is incomplete. Line shifts. Third down. That'll be AJ up the middle to the off the left tackle. And that'll be enough for a first down. Ball spotted at the 11 yard line, so it'll be first and 10 Pacola. Clock running. 333 left here in the first. Sorry. Third quarter. Cola can punch it in here. They may keep that clock running. That's going to be Coda. Game maybe three on the play. Again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight.
it's your first time watching, if you could subscribe to my channel, and if you'll turn your notifications on, you'll be notified anytime I start a live stream. We're coming up on basketball season, and we have game multiple games a week, so you never know when I may go live if you're not familiar with the high school schedule. <clears throat> and that's going to be A.J. He's going to be in. That's going to be his fifth touchdown. So Pecola moves the score to 50. We're going to have A.J. coming off the field here. Saeed Badola coming in for him. He'll take it up the middle, and two-point conversion is good. So with three, no, sorry. Well, I don't know if that's a three or a two. I guess 325 left here in the third. Pecola, 52. Haymakers, 16. We're going to take a break. This is the Pecola Indians Network. Craving pizza, maybe a calzone or some wings? Be sure to visit Simple Simon's Pizza in Pecola, your hometown pizza place. Dine in or carry out available. Call 918-436-2540 or stop by to place your order today. Owner Randy Reidner is a proud supporter of Pecola Public Schools. Simple Simon's Pizza, simply the best pizza. And we're back. A shout out to Bobby Pierce. Watching from Rock Island. It's going to be kicked down the middle. And he'll be tackled around the 38 yard line. There's a flag on the play. I think they're going to get him for a face mask. Face mask or hold? I'm going to say face mask. Okay, so they waved the penalty off. Not kept the clock running yet, so. Man in motion. That's the tailback number six. Who he's wrapped up and tackled behind the line of scrimmage. That's big number 63, Hayden Chafee. On the tackle. Loss on the play. Bring up second down. going to be tossed out to number seven. That's King. He's going to be tackled and forced out of bounds. Short gain on the play. We'll bring up third down. Seconds left here in the third. Man in motion, and we have a 
timeout called by the Haymakers. So we're going to take one with them. This is the Bacoli Indians Network. Ready to turn your location into a landmark? Boulder Designs by Baldigo Enterprises can help make it a reality. Boulder Designs creates custom boulders that can be made into any shape, size, or color. Whether it's commercial monument signage, residential landscape enhancement, a custom mailbox, or fire pit, Boulder Designs stands out from the crowd and are custom made just for you. To get a quote from your custom Boulder Design, visit fortsmith.boulderdesign.net or call 479-650-3930. Owners Lee and Stacy Baldigo are proud supporters of Pocola Public Schools. Let them help bring your vision to life. And we're back here after the timeout. It's Ozinga. He's forced out of the pocket. And he's going to get to the first down marker. So that should be enough for the first down. The ball's placed at the 50 yard line. Fifteen seconds left here in the third. May get this snap off. He's going to roll to his right. He's telling his receiver to go, and he throws it deep, incomplete. And that's the end of the third quarter with your score: Pacola fifty-two, Haskell sixteen. Look at the uh, remaining schedule here for the Indians. We've got two games left, regular season games. We have next week at home, it's going to be senior night against Porter. And then on November 3rd, we will go to Tallahena. to wrap up the regular season. And if everything stays the way it is right now, I think – Pocola would remain a third seed or third in their district. So that means they would travel to a number two for the first round of the playoffs. But we still got this. We've got teams that haven't played tonight, so we still got teams that got three games left that could drop one. And We'll call the, the ability maybe to get a better playoff spot. But as it stands right now, they are going to be the number three seed if they finish out the season with two, two more wins. So they flip the field. Ball's at the 50 yard line still. Second and ten. Nozinga takes the snap. He's looking to throw it. He's forced out of the backfield. He's going to roll to his left. And pass is incomplete. Had right, Chris Pugh forcing him out of the pocket. Third and ten for the Haymakers. And throw it out to the left. That's King. He gets by the first defender. Finally going to be forced out of bounds. That's going to be enough for a Haymaker first down.
Zinger looking to throw it. Rolls to his left. And it's going to be incomplete. Bring up second down. And they have finally left the clock running. Well, nope, they stopped it. Give a shout out to Aiden Smith, my camera guy. It's going to be screened to the right. He'll be tackled around the original line of scrimmage, maybe gain of two on the play. Shout out to Aiden Smith for coming with me tonight here, running my camera. Does a great job for the Pacola Indians Network. I'll have him during basketball season, too. Ozinga looking to throw it. He goes deep. It's a wobbler, and it's going to be knocked down. Castorell. Knocking that ball down. Had Logan Dunnigan out there too. I think Logan might have even had a shot at intercepting it. Cash came in and knocked it down. Fourth down here. This will be the second fourth down attempt here by the Haymakers. Actually third. They've made one. So they're one and three on fourth down conversions. So it'll be turned over on downs for the Indians. The ball's going to be placed around the 35-yard line. First and ten, Pecola. I didn't see who made the tackle. He has the wrong. He has the wrong roster. That was uh, Ben Hicks, I think, on the tackle. So we got Austin with Badola. He's going to hand it off to Saeed. And he'll be tackled after a gain of about two on the play. Three. They gave him another one. Austin. He's going to have to tuck it and run. Maybe gains two on the play. It's coming up a third and four for the Indians. It's Saeed Badola up the middle, and he's going to have enough for the first down. Gains about six or seven on the play. Clock remains running. Coming in on seven minutes left here in the game. We'll have players of the games here.
That's Said Badola. He gets free. And he's finally going to be brought down around the 30-yard line. So a good run there by Said. be thrown out. That's uh, going to be caught. Logan Dunnigan, I think, on the far side. And that's going to be Saeed again. He'll be down inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Pecola. It'll be thrown out. That's going to be Castorell. He makes one guy miss, and he'll be in the end zone for a touchdown. We have a flag on the play. Maybe face mask, though. Uh, face mask on the haymakers. So the touchdown will count. So Castorell with his first catch of the night, and he's going to be in for the touchdown. Okay. That's going to be Austin running to the left. He'll be in the end zone for the two-point conversion. So that's going to take the score to 60. All right, so it's going to be kicked off and be picked up by Haymaker, and he's going to be tackled around the 20-yard line, and that's going to be number five, Hicks, on the tackle. And that's going to be King. He's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. 
<clears throat> so we'll go ahead and we got a minute 30 left. I'm going to do our offensive players of the games here. I'm going to give a co-offensive again just because the two, I mean, their numbers, A.J. Lines, Durrell, and Austin Hardwig. Hardwig, he's 15-20 for 330 yards, five touchdowns. A.J., I don't have his – total for the second half, but I know he's got six touchdowns on the night. Three rushing, one passing, and one receiving. So that's going to be your offensive coordinators, our offensive players of the game, brought to you by Shane Riggs, Shelter Insurance. Defense, I'm going to give it to Hayden Chafee. He's, I mean, I haven't called his name a ton. He's had four or five tackles, but I'm telling you, he has chased this quarterback everywhere in the backfield. He's had a couple tackles for a loss, but he's a lot of the, he's been a lot of the disruption in the backfield and make, making this quarterback have to break out of the pocket almost every snap. Him and Dakota, Dakota both. Also, got to give, I guess, honorable mention to uh, Ben Hicks. Ben Hicks has had a great game, too. He's had five or six tackles. So that's your players of the game. And that's the end of the game with your final score, Pacola 60, Haskell Haymaker 16. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank uh, Hayden, Aiden, Smith, for coming with me tonight. And he's out of school on his fall break, and he, uh, I asked him if he was coming, and he didn't even hesitate. So give Hayden, or sorry, Aiden. A big thank you. That's going to be the end of our broadcast here. Thanks for tuning in. This is.